The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Six tables, The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 1949 is gone and forgotten, but to Jack Benny, 1950 will always be remembered. Because 1950 is what he paid for his new suit. And here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I want to ask you something. How did you know that I bought a new suit? I heard it on Dreer Proust. <laughs> What? Wait a minute. I want to hear this. You heard it? You heard it on what? I heard it on Drew Pearson's broadcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he got the award for being the best announcer in the world. That gives you a rough idea. Dr. Gallup must have given it to you. Now, wait a minute, Don. Drew Drearson, or Drew, Drew Pearson is a commentator who specializes in national affairs. Why would he mention that I bought a suit for $19.50? Because Wall Street feels that it indicates a definite trend toward a bull market. <laughs> yeah, I can't understand it. A man goes out and buys a plain herringbone suit and it shakes the economic system of the nation. I need wool socks, too, but who knows what it'll do to England? <laughs> But you know, Don, I really bought this suit because I thought I was going to be invited to Clark Gable's wedding. Well, the reason you weren't invited, Jack, was because they wanted to keep it a secret. I know, Don. Gee, and when Clark got married, he certainly left a trail of broken hearts. Yeah, there hasn't been so many gals weeping and wailing since Alice slipped the ring over my finger. <laughs> well, if it isn't the bashful blonde from Elbow Ben. <laughs> Say, Phil... Hey, wait a minute, Jackson. Before we get into one of them routines, I would like to greet my orchestra. I see. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, maestro. Maestro? They call you maestro? Well, how come you and your musicians are treating each other with so much dignity? On New Year's Eve, we all made a resolution. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I figured that the clowning and kidding we did was all right for the first five or ten years, but now my orchestra has reached a position of prestige in the entertainment world, and we should do nothing to jeopardize it. Well, that's wonderful, Phil. By the way, I noticed that your brass section is missing. How come? Their parole was canceled on New Year's Day. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that 703896 is still with us. I like the way he sandpapers his fingers before he plays the piano. What a gang. Phil, this is a new year, 1950. Why don't you do something about your orchestra? What do you mean? Well, just look at Remley sitting there on his stool, sound asleep, using his guitar for a pillow. Well, that ain't Frankie's fault, Jackson. It's not his fault. You know, you don't get much rest when you sleep under the sink, on the piano, or in a bathtub. Wait a minute, Phil. You mean Frankie sleeps in those kind of places? Look, Daddy sleeps in the place he was when the bottle last ran dry. <laughs> what? You know, when your knees buckle, you ain't always over a feather bed. <laughs> I guess not, but you'd think... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. I was just going... Well, Jack, you're wearing that new suit you bought last Tuesday, aren't you? Yes, Mary. Do you... Wait a minute. How did you know I bought it last Tuesday? Uh, Truman had in his message to Congress. <laughs> oh, yes. They booed the coat and cheered the pants. I remember that. What excitement. So, Mary, you know, I haven't seen you since the Rose Bowl game. That's right, Jack. There was some crowd out there, wasn't it, Mary? Oh, we didn't go to the game. We watched it on Jack's new television set. You mean Jack got a television set? Uh-huh. Well, don't tell me that tighter than springtime has finally loosened up. <laughs> Oh, he didn't buy it. It came with his new suit. <laughs> Mary, don't be ridiculous. The Warner Brothers gave it to me. Well, it's about time you certainly gave it to them. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, kids, let's cut out this small talk because we've got a very important show to do. Jack, is Fred Allen going to be on this program today? No, no, Mary. Allen will be with us next week. The train he was coming out on had to go through a sheep dip treatment at the border. <laughs> they had to dip him twice. <laughs> Tonight we're doing a very important play. It's an exciting mystery melodrama that takes place in a restaurant. Well, come on, come on. Let's get this corny sketch over with. Huh? Dennis, you're late. So what? You want to make something out of it? <laughs> what? You heard me, Clyde. You ain't wearing earmuffs. Dennis. Dennis. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. You make me sick. <laughs> Now, look, kid, if you think you can come in here... Don't crowd me, son. <laughs> For heaven's sake... Dennis, what's come over you? It's my New Year's resolution. Nobody's pushing me around anymore. That's telling him, Wormy. Yeah. <laughs> look, Dennis... Shh, leave him alone, Jackson. I told him to get tough. Oh, oh, I see, I see. What'd you say, Dennis? Nobody's pushing me around anymore. From now on, I'm getting what I want. Hey, you in the high heels. Come here. Uh, me? Yes, you, toots. Come here. Go ahead, Mary. Go ahead. Play with me. Uh, yes? Now put your arms around me and hold me tight. <laughs> tight, I said. Now I'll put my arms around you and squeeze you like this and... and... Phil, what do I do now? Well, the first thing you do, Dennis, is stop acting silly. Yes, thank you, Mr. Benny, and congratulations on your new suit. Well, thank you, Dennis. How did you know I bought a new suit? It's in the lyrics of Don't Cry, Joe. <laughs> Such a fuss over a suit. It's only herringbone, you know. Wormy. Hmm? And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to present a melodramatic mystery entitled... Murder at Romanov's. <laughs> this scene takes place at one of the most fashionable restaurants in Beverly Hills, where all of... Hmm, excuse me. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, I'm in the middle of the program. I know, boss, but this is very important. The man from the life insurance company was here about that policy you're taking out, and he asked me a lot of questions. Well, I hope you answered them right. Oh, I did. When he asked me your height, I said five foot ten. Uh-huh. Your weight, 164. Uh-huh. Your age, 39. Uh-huh. We had quite a round table discussion on that one. <laughs> Wait a minute, Rochester. Why should there be any question about my age? Oh, it wasn't the question. It was the answer we had trouble with. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll straighten that out when I see him. What other questions were there? Well, color of your eyes, blue. Uh-huh. Color of your hair, blonde. You told him I was a blonde? You must be. I got the red, brown, and black ones in the bandage. <laughs> Oh, yes. What else happened? Well, then I told him what you wanted. And he said that never in the history of the life insurance business has a policy been made out that way. Well, didn't you insist that I want it that way, Rochester? Yeah, but he told me no matter what you say, you can't be your own beneficiary. <laughs> hmm. But I argued and finally convinced him that you wouldn't take the policy out unless you could be. And what did he say? He said, just leave a Ford in address and they'll mail it on to you. <laughs> good, good. Anything else? No, that's all. Okay, goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. <laughs> all right, kids, let's not waste any more time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we bring you that melodramatic mystery entitled Murder... At Romanov's. <laughs> Set the scene, Don. Our play opens in the private office of Captain O'Benny of the Beverly Hills Police. Curtain music. <laughs> now, listen, men. There have been a lot of complaints. We're going to straighten things up around here. You first, Officer O'Day. What I do now? Yesterday, I set you out in a simple assignment. All you had to do was look for cars parked next to fire hydrants and give out traffic tickets. Well, I did. Old day, how many times must I tell you? 
Put the tickets on the cars, not the hydrants. <laughs> and you, O. Wilson, you haven't been attending to your duties either. I'm sorry, sir. Being sorry doesn't help. Remember, you're the only man on the police force who's a condemned murderer. Say, Chief, how come we have a murderer working with us? Well, on the day of his execution, he started ordering his last meal, and the state couldn't afford it. <laughs> but I'm really disgusted with you, man. Why, we even have our bloodhound, Prince, is smarter than you. Come here, Prince. Here, Prince. <laughs> Prince, how much is one and two? Row! 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 That's right. Now, what's six minus four? Row! Row! Right again, Prince. Now, what is the square root of 73,429? Put down that pencil and figure it out in your head. <laughs> Stupid dog. <laughs> now, men, today I want... Hello, Beverly Hills Police, Captain O'Benny speaking. Hello, Captain, this is Mitzi LaRue. Mitzi LaRue? Mitzi LaRue. Hello, Mitzi, how do you do? <laughs> Prince, put down those drums. I never should have given them to him for Christmas. Now, what is it, Miss LaRue? Well, Captain, I'm the cigarette girl at Romanoff's restaurant. Yeah. I want to report that a man named Carlton Quince was murdered here two hours ago. Two hours ago? Yes. <laughs> what was that, another murder? No, the same one. What? We had it transcribed for release at this more convenient time. <laughs> Good. We'll be right over. Goodbye. All right, men, get out the squad car. There's been a murder at Romanoff's. And I'll find out who killed Carlton Quince, or my name ain't... Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Brown and firm and fully packed, so LSMT, LSMT. Everybody knows that Lucky Strike pays millions more for fine tobacco. Yes, sir. Hey! Okay, man, this is Romanoff's restaurant. That man in that red uniform and gold braid must be the doorman. I'll ask him. Pardon me, are you the doorman? Well, who do you think I am, Drear Poussin? side and let me in. You can't get in here unless you have a reservation. A reservation? Well... If you say anything about being an Indian, I'll punch you right in the nose. I was trying to switch it. Now, look, there's been a murder committed in here. I'm Captain O'Benny, so stand aside while I... Doorman, what are you staring at? Ooh, a new suit. <laughs> How did you know? I heard it on the frost warning. <laughs> oh, well, out of my way. Come on, man, let's go inside. I'm going to find the murder of Carlton Quince, or my name ain't... Ellis, 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 and the tea meets mine and light and mild tobacco, yes, sir, Hey! Hey, Chief, this place is sure crowded with celebrities. Yeah, Drew, you mean your search the premises. Now, I'm going to question some of these people. I think a little short guy over there is the owner of the place. Hey, you, what's your name? I am Prince Michael Romanoff. Well, tell me, Prince Romanoff, what do you know about this murder? Murder? Has there been a murder here? Yes, your cigarette girl called me and told me about it. Well, here she comes now. I'll ask her. Tell me, Mitzi, have we had a murder today? Yes. <laughs> Carlton Quince was quilled. <laughs> One lousy rehearsal. <laughs> Quince was killed. <laughs> there he is at the corner table, dead. 
So he is. Strange, I didn't notice it before. <laughs> Wait a minute, who are you trying to kid? Don't tell me you didn't notice him with all that blood on his shirt. I thought it was Borsch. <laughs> oh, yeah, now come clean, Romanoff. Did you kill Carlton Quince? It couldn't have been me, Captain. I wasn't even here when the murder was committed. Where were you? Having lunch at Simon's Drive-In. <laughs> How come you weren't eating here? Who can afford these prices? <laughs> oh, well, who's that sitting over there eating that big steak? Simon, he's loaded. <laughs> I'll get back to you later. I want to look around. When nobody leaves this room, there's been a murder now, committed. Now, don't raise your voice, Chief. You remember, this is the classiest joint in town. Some clash. Look at that broom leaning against the table. <laughs> Well, that's no broom. That's Frank Sinatra. Well, I'm going over and talk to him. Say, you. Are you Frank Sinatra? Won't you tell me when we will meet again Sunday, Monday? <laughs> I'll be satisfied with you by my side. Oh, stop showing off. Quiet, O'Day. Where's O. Wilson? In the old kitchen. Where else? <laughs> you go look for clues. Now, listen, Sinatra. What were you doing at the time of the murder? I was eating lunch. A likely story. What did you have? A raisin. <laughs> One raisin for lunch? Boy, am I stuffed. <laughs> Say, Captain O'Benny, that's a beautiful new suit you're wearing. Cost nineteen fifty, didn't it? Yes. How did you know? Last Friday I sang "Don't Cry, Joe." <laughs> oh yeah. Now tell me, Frank, what do you know about the murder of Carlton Quince? Well, personally, I think Romanoff did it. Oh, you do? Well, I'll call him back again. Oh, Prince! <laughs> <laughs> Not you, you stupid dog! <laughs> Put down that pencil. If you haven't figured it out yet, forget it. <laughs> Prince Michael, come here. Yes, Captain O'Benny. Sinatra thinks you're the man who murdered... Captain O'Benny, Captain O'Benny. What is it, O'Day? Would you think a man is guilty if you saw him running around with a smoking gun in one hand, a bloodstained knife in the other, and he kept yelling, I did it, I did it, I did it! <laughs> I did it! Well, of course that man is guilty. Well, if I see anyone like that, I'll arrest him. <laughs> good. Good. Tell me, Captain O'Benny, who is this peasant? I'm, I'm Officer O'Day. Who are you? I am His Imperial Highness Prince Michael Romanoff. Well, how do you do? <laughs> Cut that out, O'Day. I want to finish questioning Sinatra. Where did he go? Here I am, Captain O'Benny. You got to do something about this dog of yours. What about the dog? He keeps taking me out in the yard and burying me all the time. Oh, come on now, doggy. Put me down. Yeah, put Frankie down. Stop beating his head against the floor. You teach a dog drums and he goes crazy. Now, look, we're not getting anywhere in this investigation. Say, Captain. What is it, Mitzi? Why don't you question that woman at the corner table? She looks suspicious. Okay, I will. Nobody leave here till I come back. Come on, men. I'll find out who killed Carlton Quince, or my name ain't... Ellis, 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 and Mitzi, you find the murderer of Carlton Quince. Hey! All right, miss. I'm Captain O'Benny. What's your name? Rosalind Russell. Rosalind Russell! Now, wait a minute, Miss Russell. This is a restaurant. Who's applauding you? The waiters. I'm a heavy tipper. Now, well, I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> now, what were you doing at the time of the murder? Believe me, Captain O'Benny, I had nothing to do with the murder. Absolutely nothing. I was just sitting here eating my lunch. A likely story. What did you have for lunch? Well, I started off with tomato juice. No, it was prune juice. No, tomato juice. And then I had consomme. And then I had a filet mignon, medium rare, and potatoes. French fried potatoes, do you hear me? French fried potatoes! Miss Russell, have you ever won the Academy Award? No, but I'm always in there punching. <laughs> Now, 
Now, just a minute, Miss Russell. Where were you when Carlton Quince was murdered? I was in the theater watching my new Columbia picture, Tell It to the Judge. And by the way, congratulations on your new suit. How did you know? It was in the newsreel. <laughs> well, say, that's a nice dress you're wearing. It's taffeta, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is taffeta. Would you mind getting up and walking around a bit? Walk around? Why? I always wanted to hear Rosalind Russell. <laughs> I just had my lunch. Now, Miss Russell, what do you know about this murder? Nothing, nothing. Why don't you ask Gene Kelly over there? Gene Kelly? Oh, yes. I'll go over and talk to him. And I'll find out who killed Carlton Quince, or my name ain't... Ellison. 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 Lucky strike. Hey! That was the lousiest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> you one rehearsal. That's all I You're Gene Kelly, aren't you? <laughs> now, what were you doing at the time of the murder, Kelly? Come on, Kelly, talk. This is radio, not television. Okay, okay, I'll talk, I'll talk. I thought you would. Now, what were you doing two hours ago at the time of the murder? I was in the Egyptian theater watching that new Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Technicolor picture, On the Town, which stars Gene Kelly, Frank Sinatra, Betty Garrett, and Jules Munchen. It was directed by Gene Kelly, who also appeared in such sensational hits as Take Me Out to the Ball Game, The Pirate, Anchors Away. And, in his spare time, gives dancing lessons to Arthur Murray. I see. And what did you do after you left the theater? I rushed right over here. Why? I couldn't wait to see your new suit. How did you know I had a new suit? Well, while I was sitting in the Egyptian theater watching that new Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Technicolor picture on the town, which stars Gene Kelly... Frank Sinatra, Betty Garrett, and Jules Munchen, and was directed by Gene Kelly, who also appeared in such sensational hits as Take Me Out to the Ball Game, The Pirate, Anchors Away. Yes? What was it you asked me? <laughs> I asked you how you knew I had a new suit. Oh, oh, yes. Well, well, I was in the Egyptian theater watching... Never mind! Now, <laughs> now, look, Kelly, I'm going to find out who killed Carlton Quince if it takes me clear into the middle of Amos and Andy. Now, come clean, Kelly. Why did you kill Carlton Quinn? I didn't do it. It was Mitzi LaRue. I didn't do it. It was Mike Romanoff. I didn't do it. It was Rosalind Russell. I didn't do it. Wait, Frankie, I haven't accused you yet. Oh. <laughs> What's going on here anyway? Now, look, somebody in this room murdered Carlton Quince, and I'm going to find out who. I beg your pardon, but I have to go now. Huh? Who are you? Carlton Quince. <laughs> Carlton Quince? Why, you're the murdered man. I know, but I have to go to rehearsal. They're killing me again tonight on the Whistler. <laughs> on the Whistler program? Uh, yes. Would you hand me that napkin, please? The napkin? I want to wipe off this borscht. They're strangling me there. <laughs> oh, well, lots of luck. May I have your autograph? Certainly. Thank you. Music, please. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Six table diamond. Friends, it's certainly true that when you smoke, you want smoothness, mildness, and deep down enjoyment. And that's precisely what you'll get with every lucky strike you light, because there's never a rough puff in a lucky. Just think of that, friends. Luckies are always smooth, mild, and mellow, every puff of the way. For you see, it takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. Now, fine tobacco costs more, and luckies pay more. That's right. Luckies pay millions of dollars more than official parity prices to get ripe, mellow tobacco for your lucky strike. Just listen for a moment to what the tobacco experts say about the kind of leaf Lucky Strike buys. Take Mr. L. Garland Griffin, a tobacco auctioneer from Clarksville, Virginia, who recently said, All in all, I've sold over 100 million pounds of tobacco. And season after season, I've seen Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Prime, ripe leaf. The kind of tobacco for downright good smoking. 
I've smoked Lucky's regularly for 14 years. Now there's a tip for your friends from a man who really knows tobacco. So for your own deep-down smoking enjoyment, light up a Lucky. You'll agree with the tobacco experts, with the millions who choose Lucky's for a finer, milder, smoother smoke. Yes, puff after puff, pack after pack. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky. Good reason to make your next carton Lucky Strike. All right, men, we're on our way back to the station. I better make a report. Calling all cars, calling all cars, is Captain O'Benny. The Romanoff murder mystery has been solved. Thanks to Michael Romanoff, Frank Sinatra, Rosalind Russell, and Gene Kelly. That is all. Headquarters, have you got anything to report? Yes, Chief. Something just came in on a teletype. What is it? It says Fred Allen will be the guest star on a Jack Benny program next week. Hmm, that'll really be murder. Hey, we're supposed to make a right turn to the police station. <laughs> you turned left, you stupid dog. <laughs> Never got his driver's license, I'll never know. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in the day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Annie show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. 